welcome to a discussion with women business owners and experts on women business on unique challenges and special characteristics of women-led businesses. Today's discussion is brought to you by Guardian Life Small Business Research Institute. How would you define uh, your leadership style? And do you need a detail person with you to help run your business, or are you able to do both? Are you able to manage, micromanage the business, and also carry the vision with you? I call myself a visionary leader, so I'm that person with the passion, with the drive, with the insight to see what can really happen with aging. If I had to say one of the things that I learned when I started the business, I felt like I had to do everything myself. And I think that's a very female kind of trait. So I'm constantly going between what's the bigger picture vision and what's the detail of the business. I would describe myself as, as a strategic visionary leader as well. I'm constantly thinking what's next and how do I assure that I'm able to continue to create the jobs. The biggest challenge is really to establish the right leadership team, establish that trust, and really let them do what they have to do because they have very talented people out there. And where my strengths lie and my leadership style, I am an off-the-wall entrepreneur and love to lead. I do not like to manage. And so I figured that out a little bit late, but when I stepped into leadership, I had to surround myself with a leadership team that I could trust, that I could give some you know, responsibility to and not have to be a control freak with a tactical. And that's one of the things Guardian Life really looks at too, is how different a lot of women business owners can be from each other. So if you separate it out into two areas on the leadership piece, one question is there's always the perception that women are gonna build so softer, gentler businesses. Mm -hmm. And actually, women report feeling more strongly about the people that are in their business. What have you figured out about managing people in the last decade or two? I would say that the first part of my um, time leading and, and managing, I was a big enabler. My style has changed where I'm, I'm over-communicating, um, very clear on what the expectations need to be. And actually, I love conflict. And so having fierce conversations with staff, with employees, to push them out of comfort. And you know, my line is either you can't or you won't. I do have a question that wasn't on your list, and that would just be for the ladies here. My two leaders are both men. And I'm just wondering if you guys have found it challenging to have men, do they find it challenging to report to you as a woman? And I just am interested to see or hear what you guys have to say and what your studies have shown. I think we always need to remember that up until a few years ago, everything we know about how businesses run, how it works, inside and outside, is done based on how guys ran businesses. Just now, I think, we're really starting to see some, some innovation around business models and business practices that women are bringing into it so that we can take a step back and say there are lots of different ways of doing this. I want to touch on advice. Were there any kind of epiphany moments or something that's happened over the last uh, year, five years or something that in your journey as a business owner that you wish you knew when you started? It was not until coming out of a recession that I sought mentorship. I, I joined some groups. Andrea and I shared you know, membership in the Commonwealth Institute's forum group. And for, for me, it was being alone at the top and needing really even to be held accountable to some of the initiatives and, and strategic goals I was up to. And that's what an advisory council and board does for you. And I just, I can't imagine not having it now. So oftentimes what you'll see is the founders have a very specific idea of what they want, which may not be in the best interest of the organization once it gets beyond a certain point. And so I think that that's one of the things that, you know, many times when I'm talking to entrepreneurs that they consistently run into is these organizational or leadership challenges that are because of either culture or the founding team not wanting to um, you know, give away some of the responsibility or the management. I guess going into a business I thought that I would figure it out, this is exactly what it's going to look like, you know, I had my plan, I had my outcome, and then it, it, that's just not that, first of all, that's not life, and second of all, that's not business. And then it's just like this constant shifting and changing, but while you're keeping the focus on your core business. But if I had known that, it would have just been a different approach, because I really spent a lot of time angsting over the fact that I got it wrong. 